Hello everyone, it's John here from Uni Taste Today's and this is a Uni Taster Tuesday. A big welcome to you all that join us for this event. We do these events at Uni Taster Tuesdays to support schools and students with university guidance, despite obviously the circumstances we're in at the moment. And we run these events every single Tuesday at 9.30 a.m., 12 p.m. and 3 p.m. The 9.30 a.m. events and the 3 p.m. events are subject specials. So if you're interested in studying particularly uh, subjects at university, you can tune in at 9.30 and 3. And then the 12 o'clock, which is what this is, it, the 12 o'clock event is a general introduction to university. So each week we specialise in, in different topics featuring different universities looking at different areas of university. And that's that's what we do at 12 o'clock. If anyone is interested in computer games or animation, etc., the three o'clock event today is exploring uh, university courses in that subject area. As far as um, these events, so I'm going to give you a few useful links now before I, I crack on with, with this one. Uh, firstly, unitastedays.com forward slash Tuesdays is where you can book future events. And we've, we're listing events now right up until the end of August. Uh, you can also on that page as well, access recordings of all events today. So if there's if you want to watch back on, on events we hosted previously, uh, unitastedays.com forward slash Tuesdays is where you should go. Likewise, if you're interested in a particular university and, and perhaps you know where you want to go and you just want to find out more about that university, we also have a central hub of online university events, which could be virtual open days, it could be online chats, webinars, online testers, etc. And that's at unitastedays.com forward slash online. And that should be pretty useful for you as well. But in terms of this event, which is a Uni Taste Tuesday, we're today joined by three universities, John Bowe Solent University, the University of Bradford, and also York St. John University. And we're going to feature three presentations of, of around 15 minutes um, looking at, at three areas of university. And then what we're going to do after that is return to the institutions and ask just for a one minute introduction to their institution as well. So, so as, as of today, you'll be able to find out by the end of this session a little bit more about each institution, whether that's Solent, York St. John or the University of Bradford. But as well, you're going to find out about a certain area of university guidance. And, and what we're doing today is exploring interviews and auditions, tips to maximise your employability. And as well as that, we're looking at how to gain work experience in a virtual world. And I'm really delighted to say I'm joined by Angie from Solent University. Caroline from the University of Bradford and Louise today from York St. John University. So that is the event. The final thing to say to you um, as far as today's event as well is the Q&A is open. Uh, this event hasn't got an awkward Q&A where we're going to answer questions live etc. It's a typed Q&A um, which means you can post questions throughout and we'll be answered the, answer it throughout as well. So if you've got any questions for me at Uni Taste Days um, or Solent University, Bradford University or York St John do use the q and I'm delighted to also say we're joined by Rebea from the University of Birmingham. Rebea is a final year student so if you've got any questions for a real university student you can also use the Q&A and ask Rebea some questions as well and that should be really really useful for you. But um, without further ado please if I can introduce our first speaker and that's Angie Randall who's joining us from Solent University. Andy's, Angie is going to do a session on interview and audition tips uh, which would be really, really useful. Um, and, and Angie's got some great content, which we can look at the, the current situation as well with, with code and everything else. So Angie, without further ado, um, I'll pass the floor to you, please. Lovely, thank you very much. Okay, so I'm just gonna share my screen, so bear with me a second. I hope all this technology works. Okay, bear with me. Okay, so I'm just going to talk through a little bit about interviews, auditions and portfolios. So not every course at university will involve um, an interview audition or portfolio, but certainly some of them will. So if you think that a course that you're likely to be applying for might involve one of these, I'm just going to kind of talk through how the process works and um, maybe give you a few ideas and some tips and hints as well. Um, okay, so we'll start. So what are interviews, auditions and portfolios? So obviously you submit your UCAS application, that's your first kind of um, stage of the application. It's got your contact details, all your qualifications and your personal statement. But sometimes course leaders and admissions tutors also want to see a bit of extra information about you to make sure that you've got the ability and the motivation um, to succeed on the course. So I guess every university works slightly different. So I'm, I'm gonna talk generally about how universities work. Um, a uni um, an interview will usually be with maybe a course leader or a subject tutor from that course, potentially with an admissions tutor. It could be a one-to-one -one interview, it could be a group interview, 
Um, it kind of depends on your university. Obviously, you'll get all the information in advance of your interview to kind of know what to expect. Um, auditions, so some courses ask for auditions, and we'll talk a little bit in a minute about what kind of courses might ask for that. Um, gives you the opportunity to kind of really show off your skills for a variety of mediums. They could be acting, singing, dancing, music. Um, so kind of another way of showing what you can offer a university. And then some courses, so obviously arts related courses, may ask for a portfolio of work um, to sort of showcase all the work you've done um, previously, um, you know, skills you've learned, skills you've developed, um, potentially either in person or through an e-portfolio as well. So interviews, auditions and portfolio viewings tend to be the kind of extra things that you might have to do as part of the application process. So where are they used? So um, you can usually tell um, if the course is going to ask you for an audition into your portfolio um, on the university web pages. So when you look on the course description of each um, course that you're applying for, under entry requirements, it will let you know if you're due to have any of these particular extra um, processes. It will also let you know on UCAS as well. So there'll be lots of information before you know um, to let you know what's kind of expected after you've submitted your application. Um, so it's always worth when you're doing your research, just making sure you know what you'll be having to do. Don't ever let it put you off applying for a course. Um, I think that actually interviews and auditions and portfolios are a really kind of positive experience. Um, so just kind of be aware of it when you're applying for them. So interviews are usually used to complement courses that are kind of people focused. Um, things like nursing, social work, and um, certainly at Solent we sometimes interview things about audio engineering and live sound. Teaching courses, you might be looking to do interviews. So kind of um, courses where it's really important that we can see like your personality and how you might interact with people, how you might work with different people, because that's such an integral part of the course. So if you're applying to things like medicine, veterinary science, dentistry, social work, nursing, teaching, I would pretty much say you're expected to come for an interview. Um, auditions, so usually for predominantly performance-based courses, maybe not every performance course will audition, but certainly a lot of them will be looking for that. So that could be music, it could be dance, musical theatre, acting and performance, um, even something like journalism, if it's kind of broadcast journalism. So often those are the courses where you'll be looking um, to have an audition as well. And then portfolio, portfolios tend to be based around art, design, fashion. It could be something like um, architecture as well, graphic design, animation. So anything which is kind of skills based within the arts courses, um, is likely to require a portfolio as well as your application. So I think if you're looking to apply for any of these types of courses, chances are that you will be kind of doing an interview, audition or portfolio. Okay, so when do they happen? Um, again, it kind of depends a little bit about the university. So you'll usually receive an, um, an invitation to interview, audition or portfolio after the January UCAS deadline. The universities will differ perhaps when they run these events. So some actually may invite you in before that, um, after they've received your application, or some might wait until the 15th of January deadline. So um, again, it's worth asking these questions at open days or maybe contacting universities that you're applying for, just to find out when you might hear about whether you're likely to get asked for an interview or additional portfolio, um, just because it can vary. Um, universities will either contact you directly, so they'll write to you at home or send you an email. So it's really important that on your UCAS application, all your contact details, etc., are up to date so they can get in touch with you. Or they might invite you via the UCAS application system, the track system. So again, it's really worth um, checking your UCAS track on a really regular basis after you've submitted your um, application, just to make sure you're not missing any invitations, because you must, um, you must attend your interview audition or portfolio. Um, if you don't come along for any reason, um, then the university can withdraw your offer. So if you can't make the date, um, just get in touch with the university and let them know. I always think it's quite good practice and it's quite a professional thing to confirm your attendance with the university. So just either drop them a quick email or um, give them a quick phone call or um, reply and track just to say, yep, that's great. I'll be coming along. I look forward to you know, meeting you. I think all of these things um, are really useful things you do in the job world. So I think they're also really useful things that you will do when applying for university as well. So in terms of preparing for a university interview, although the whole process can sound quite scary, it really isn't meant to be. It's really um, not meant to be a daunting experience. It's actually a chance for you to almost interview the university a little bit yourself as well, because it's your chance to find out how that university feels, what the staff are like, what the atmosphere is like. 
Um, and it's really just a chance to show off and be your best, not show off, but be your best self. Promote yourself, be a really positive kind of person. Universities are looking for students that are really motivated and enthusiastic. So that's what's really got to come across in your interview. You need to kind of show you've researched the course, you know what you're talking about, um, and be a kind of a person that teachers are going to want to teach and that other students are going to want to work with on their course as well. So I'd say the best ways to kind of prepare for university interview, fairly similar to a job interview as well, and um, get all the information and documents you need in advance. Um, you don't want to be kind of scrabbling together to get that on the morning of your interview because that just adds to stress. Um, dress to impress, you don't have to go suited and booted, but I think it's worth making sure that you're dressed in a professional, uh, sort of sensible way, I would say, in terms of how you come across. Um, get there early. I think there's nothing worse than um, going to your interview, not knowing where you're going. So maybe plan out your route beforehand. Um, you're already kind of stressed by the time you arrive there. So it's much better to be, you know, far too early. You can get there, have a walk around, get a feel for the university and kind of calm yourself down before the interview rather than running in kind of late. <laughs> I think what universities are really keen to find out for your interview is that you know about the course that you're applying for, you know what you're coming on to do at university. They want to know that you've done your research and that you can demonstrate that you've done that and you know what the course entails. So before you go to your interview for each university, read through the course descriptions, maybe you know, read through their prospectus or look on their website and get a real kind of feel for the university because that will definitely help you when you go for your interview. Also talk about things you've done at college or things that you've done outside of college that are relevant to the course. Talk about your experiences, share your knowledge, and really kind of make sure that you're promoting all the strengths and skills that you have through the interview. It can sometimes feel quite hard to do that. I think like when writing your application, it can feel quite hard to really kind of be positive about yourself, but this is definitely your opportunity to do that um, and back yourself up with examples of uh, things you've done to support your application. Read through your personal statement because the admissions tutors or the academics will be having a copy of your personal statement so they might ask you questions about that so just read through your personal statement before you go make sure you kind of remember everything you put in there and that you're confident and comfortable talking about things that you put in your personal statement. Plan out some answers and in a minute I'll just um, talk through some kind of common interview questions and um, sometimes it's really good just to get an idea of some of the answers that you might say and um, where you to be asked these questions. It doesn't mean that you have to remember them word for word but sometimes if you've done a bit of preparation it can just help you when that question comes out and you suddenly think oh yes I remember I, I thought about that and that's the answer I prepared. Chances are with interviews you'll come out of your interview and think of lots of things that you could have said but actually if you've done a lot of preparation then hopefully you'll kind of remember to say those at the time. Talk to people around you and get advice. It sounds a bit, um, bit naff but maybe practice with your family or your friends and kind of get the idea about what it feels like to be in an interview as well. Um, also prepare some questions so whether it's an interview for a university or actually a job um, at the end they'll ask you whether you have any questions and I think it's always worth having maybe two or three questions that you can ask because again it's just demonstrating that you're really keen to know as much as you can about the course you want to know where it might take you so you might ask about graduate destinations so what have their students gone on and done you might ask about links with employers you could have kind of two or three questions lined up to ask them that just shows that you really have thought ahead and prepared for the interview and I think like relax and enjoy the interview and um, our academics and university academics, they, they really want to make this experience a really positive one for you. It's a chance for them to meet you and get to know you. So it's not a really scary thing. It's hopefully going to be actually a really enjoyable experience. Um, if you can try and stay relaxed and just come across in a positive and friendly way, then I think that you're going to be doing absolutely fine. So I'm not going to talk through all the questions that are on here, but these are generally some of the questions you might get asked in an interview. So obviously talking about your interest in the course, this is bound to be asked because obviously that's the key thing for why they want to find out what you want to do at university and to find out what your motivations and your ambitions are. They may ask about strengths and weaknesses. Um, and again, with weaknesses, it's always worth thinking of something, but also thinking of a way that you might be addressing that. So oh, sometimes, I'm, you know, I take on too much. So, you know, I've actually worked on prioritizing things and that's, you know, how I'm overcoming this. So that's obviously quite a good way of kind of addressing that. Um, they might ask about things like when you worked as part of a team, when you've shown initiative and leadership, because all of these things um, are skills you're going to have to have when you go to university, managing workload, responsibility. 
um, they probably they might ask you about spare time as well what you do in your spare time so it's worth thinking of relevant things and um, a bit like in your personal statement don't just mention anything like doing your spare time but kind of try and make it relevant and actually think about what your career progression might be after the course because they might ask you questions about that and then at the end they are likely to ask you about um, whether you have any questions and that's where your preparation can come in so I think if you can look at some of these general interview questions give a bit of an idea about you know prepare a bit of an idea of some answers for these then you're going to be fine interviews so things like nursing social work and again you'll be given information prior to that so make sure you read through because it might be you have to prepare more specific subject um information for your interview as well so it's always worth just making sure you're reading everything that gets sent to you by a university so i'll move on to auditions so these are for people that may be doing music performance acting um singing dance any of those kind of courses universities will be really upfront with you they'll give you plenty of notice about what you need to prepare in advance um, and also how the day will happen. Often in universities, same with interviews actually, and the same with portfolio viewings will build a bigger day for you. So you might also get the chance to have a tour, get to see maybe even some practical sessions, meet some current students on the course as well. So um, again, it's another really interesting way of finding out more about the university. So they'll let you know what you need to prepare. Different universities will have different audition requirements, so it's really worth making sure that you read the brief um, fully and you know, carefully before you go off to audition. Phone the universities, get in touch with them if there's anything you're unsure of, because they're more than happy to talk to you about it. It could be solo pieces, it could be pre-recorded pieces, um, it could be virtual, obviously in these current you know, times, all of this stuff is happening online, so it could be that you're expected to do a virtual interview, a virtual audition, or maybe an e-portfolio. Um, ideally, you know, we kind of try and get you to do it um, on site because that's probably a better way. It could be group work, it could be monologues, it could be preparing a script or sight reading. So there's lots of different types of auditions that might happen. And you can ask at open days before you apply to universities, you can talk to the academics and find out what they usually set as their audition pieces. They're also not just looking at your performance skills, that's obviously really important, but they also want to look at things like how you work as a team, maybe how you use your initiative, maybe how you show leadership, what your knowledge of the course is. So it's not just about your actual practical skills, but also what you're like as a student and how you might contribute to that course when you get there. Sometimes they may also be followed by a short interview as well, so you might be prepared for that when you go for your audition. So top tips, it's a little bit like an interview to be honest, Plan ahead, practice, practice, practice is the best way to make sure that you feel comfortable and confident when you get into your audition. So practice in front of people as well, because that's what you'll obviously be doing on the day. Get there early, the time to warm up. Obviously, you know, performers need that time to warm up and prepare themselves and get ready to perform. So get there early, time to warm up and also calm yourself down as well. Try to stay relaxed, it's probably easier said than done, but remember that everyone's in the same position and everyone's feeling nervous, probably even the academics, because they can pick up on your nerves and, you know, they're really keen to meet you. So try and stay rel relaxed and also enthusiastic and try and keep that enthusiasm going through the whole process. It's tiring and we completely appreciate that, but if you're showing your enthusiasm and your motivation through that whole process, that's going to come across really well. And let your personality show through. We want to find out what you're like. We want to know, you know, what the type of person you are. I think it's really keen for academics that you show interest in the course and you ask questions. And also remember, you've got a sympathetic audience. Like with the interviews, they're not trying to catch you out. They're trying to support you through the whole process. So remember that, you know, these people are really trying to, um, you know, support you through the audition process. They're not trying to catch you out. And just kind of enjoy it. See it as a really good experience. Then moving on to portfolios. So again, these are for more arts-based courses, but it, you know, could be for te more technical courses like architecture as well, maybe even engineering if you have to do sort of an engineering portfolio. Um, so a portfolio is a collection of work um, where you can demonstrate your skills, your techniques and your experiences, and often how these have developed over time. Um, it's great to have these skills, but if you can show how you develop them and how you might develop them in the future, that also looks really good. With your portfolio, you want to show your passion, your range of skills as well. So you might want to focus not just on one type of um, skill or one type of medium of art, but maybe make it broader. Look at things like your abilities and your motivation. So we, when we um, get your application, that's brilliant. We can see your application, we can see your personal statement. But obviously for an arts-based course, we need to see your skills. So that's where a portfolio comes in. 
your university will send you out a brief either in the post or via track and it will really outline exactly what you need to do whether it's submitted in person whether you're coming into the university via the post or electronically so um again there's you know you really need to read the brief and work out exactly what it is um, that the university is looking for and again it might also be followed by an interview or like an informal chat Okay, so just a portfolio to be proud of. So I think, again, make sure you're reading the brief from each university because it will be different. So make sure you're kind of fitting the criteria for each university. And really think about the mediums of art you want to showcase. And you can always talk to your tutors about this as well because they've supported students with putting portfolios together. Ask for examples, ask the universities for examples of what students have submitted in the past. That can really help you. And just make sure that you're best, you've got the best work to meet the requirements. They also like to see what influences you have. Obviously, art's really important in terms of you know, the artists that have influenced you, so that can be in your portfolio. Um, and things, you, they want to see your passion and creativity and your range of talent. But if you want to, you absolutely can include writing that relates to the work and actually demonstrates how you've progressed um, you know, to create this portfolio. So there's lots of ways of making sure that you've got the best kind of possible portfolio to show up. Okay, so just quickly, so what happens after? Um, with all of these, I think um, it's a really important chance to use the experience to help inform your decision. Because actually the whole interview audition portfolio process really helps with making up your mind about where you want to go to university. So use this experience to help you with that choice. And actually reflect on how it went, because um, that can really help you for, you know, if you have to go on and do further auditions, interviews and portfolios. So think about what went well, what you've learned, what you might want to do um, in the future. And just write these ideas down because you'll kind of benefit from this in the future. Once you've had your um, audition portfolio or interview, um, in time the universities will update track um, or contact you to let you know what their decision is. Um, you need to keep on top of track, as I mentioned, because once you start getting given offers and you find out your decisions, once you've got all your offers, you need to then start replying to them. So you need to make sure that you're sticking to deadlines um, and keeping on top of that, otherwise you maybe get your offer um, withdrawn. Okay, so just some last top tips. Um, so the interviews, um, read the interview brief in full, double check the date and the time and where you've got to be and make sure you leave yourself plenty of time to get there. Um, and just make sure you've done your research about the particular course um, at that particular university before you go to the interview. For auditions, make sure you read through the audition brief and full. Be prepared to answer questions and know, you know, about your piece and how you came together with it. So know the context of your piece. Make sure you can ask questions on it. And also ensure the length of the pieces are within the required time limit. So you will be given a set time for your audition. And it's really important that you kind of stick to that as well. And for the portfolio, so read the portfolio brief in full before selecting your work. You might come back to it, put something together, walk away from it, give yourself some time and then come back to it with a fresh pair of eyes. Um, demonstrate a variety of skills and also talk about what influences your work as well. I think so that's kind of just a, a whistle stop tour really of interviews, auditions and portfolios. Um, obviously there's a chance to ask questions on the Q&A, so please feel free to do that now. So I'm just going to stop sharing, but thank you so much for listening. Thank you, Angie. Um, excellent session introducing auditions. Um, you kept on saying it really well, and I'm not going to try and say the three together because um, I'll mess it up, but um, really, really good session. Thank you. Uh, everyone always asks about recordings um, and slides. We, we generally don't circulate slides just because we record these sessions and, and the recordings are far more useful. So unitastays.com forward slash Tuesdays if you want to see things like Angie's um, suggested uh, questions, etc. Now, without further ado, please, if I can introduce our second speaker, and that's Caroline Priestley. Caroline is a senior UK and EU recruitment officer at the University of Bradford, and Caroline is going to do a session on gaining work experience in a virtual world. So, without further ado, Caroline, our, the floor is yours, please. Thank you very much, Dan, and uh, thank you to Angie as well. That was a, a fantastic insight. Thank you. So we've been asked a lot um, at the moment, of course, about kind of work experience in um, a virtual world and how people can gain that. So we just thought it'd be good just to give you a little bit of an idea of obviously what you can do, what you can't do, what you can do from home, what you can do in different circumstances. So we're just going to uh, let you know what we're going to cover. So we're going to have a little chat about the current situation what universities are looking for, what you can do from home, creating a bit of a resource pack, portfolio, that kind of thing, what you can do externally, 
And then just summarise, obviously, uh, all the different activities that you can uh, do. So uh, without further ado, so obviously these have been very challenging times for all of us. Um, universities and higher education providers are aware that students have struggled to uh, be able to do their work experience. So we are aware of that. We are all in the same situation. We are all obviously aware of that in schools, colleges, and obviously in higher education. So just to reassure you that that is the case and the same, and uh, not to be too sort of concerned about that. We obviously are all a little bit uncertain when things will return to normal and when you'll be able to come in sort of for open days sort of for, at the moment we're obviously doing virtual open days but you can still gain quite a realistic insight um, obviously thankfully we know that we're obviously living in a world which we're uh, we've all adapted to and obviously adapted to quite quickly in terms of the virtual world that we're all in so there are ways that you can still do that and you can still start to build up uh, different experiences and to get sort of different transferable skills as well so what are we looking for is universities. So we obviously want to make sure um, that you've researched your choice of career, your, your choice of course, and your choice of university as well. So we want to see that you've taken that time and you've done that research. We want a well thought out personal statement that demonstrates obviously what you have been able to do. So we want to make sure that you've thought that through, that you've been able to really think about obviously what you're going into, really kind of unpick that and sort of think about what you're doing. The fact that you have been able to build on some transferable skills. The fact that you thought outside the box as well and looked at different ways to gain experience. So at the moment, we've had lots of people contacting us saying, what can I do? What can I do? There are lots of things that you can do. So the fact that you've sat and kind of planned and thought about that, we want to see that. And the fact that you've created a plan um, and you're obviously keeping that up to date. You know what's going on in your profession. You know what's going on in your universities. You know what the changes are. So we're wanting you to really think it through and sort of get yourself, uh, get yourself to sort of a whole kind of uh, range of resources available. So first of all, I think it's important to think about what you can do from home. So we know that a lot of people are obviously uh, studying from home, maybe going into school and college a little bit, but we know that in the main, people are doing a lot of things from home. So what can you do? There are some fantastic resources out there, and I'm sure that you found some of these already. The National Career Service and Prospects have some superb information about the skills that you need to do certain careers, some fantastic links. Research your profession on the internet. So there's some great vlogs and blogs out there. There's some fantastic academic research that universities are doing. So read around what they're doing, some journals, just keep up to date on your profession and what's happening. Social media is obviously absolutely superb. Um, and there's been some brilliant um, Facebook live sessions. So UCAS have been doing sessions. I watched one last week on nursing, Health Education England have been doing plenty as well if you're thinking about the health subjects. But they're also doing lots of different ones. So uh, as John mentioned earlier, there's a session this afternoon and I know one of our academics is part of that as well. So there's a lot of academics getting involved in things, both online, obviously doing the uni taste of things and Facebook. Follow your professional body as well on social media. So just to give you an example, the Nursing Midwifery Council is one of those. Have a look at what they're doing in your particular professional area and you'll get some really good insight then into that particular sort of what, what's happening any research that's going on, that kind of thing. And the main thing is to use the people around you. So think about the people around you, think about the people that you know by your different connections. And I'm sure that if you chat to people, they will know people who, who are animators, nurses, they're working as an accountant. So ask if you can chat to them. Arrange a time, obviously, when you can speak to them over Skype, where you can have a video chat or phone chat and discuss with them to say, what is your role? What do you do day to day? What skills do I need? What do I need to build on? What are the top tips? Um, what's changing? That kind of thing. And then the other thing is use virtual open days, um, webinars, taster sessions. Universities are doing a huge amount of things at the moment. They're doing a lot of activity. I know all the universities are doing some fantastic things. You don't have to be thinking about applying to those universities, but use the resources that we're all doing because we're obviously all working very closely together to support students. So use all the resources. Create a resource pack or a portfolio if you're looking to go into more of the sort of the animation and the TV film, those kind of things. 
So start to think about the sort of resource pack that you can start to uh, to build up. Start to think about what you can do to sort of develop everything, so you've got something to uh, so you don't forget what you've done. You um, you always forget what you've done when you try and think back on it, and that's something that students say to us all the time. They say I've not done anything, and when you actually start to chat to them, they've done a lot. So start to think about building up a, a bit of a pack of things that you've done. Think about um, sort of collating it all, so keep it in one place so you don't sort of uh, lose it. So you think about everything that you've researched, bookmark your key websites so you don't uh, lose them. Think about what you need to do in your role, and that's why the careers websites are fantastic. So think about the skills to be a good nurse, think about skills to be an accountant, think about skills if you're going to go into TV and film, and think about how you're going to demonstrate that. And then the most important thing is, to try and plan it and keep to a time scale. So we appreciate at the moment some people are sort of in school, maybe a day or two a week. There's lots of different things going on. You're studying from home, quite a unique sort of situation that we're in. So plan that out really carefully. So plan the research, thinking about your personal statement, thinking about your interview preparation, like Angie was just talking about. So start to collate it all now. So when you do get to September and October, you're not trying to think, where did I find that really useful journal? You've got it. To, you've got it to hand. So, what can you do externally? What uh, What can you still uh, sort of? But what's available to you still externally? So, there have been there has been demand, obviously, in certain areas still. And that we, I know lots of students that I've been chatting to and working with, uh, both in Year Twelve and uh, sort of Year Thirteen, have been doing some fantastic roles within the NHS. Some great um, opportunities for volunteering. Obviously retail, those kind of areas are still looking for support. And there's some absolutely superb community initiatives as well. So I've just put uh, some links on there that you might want to uh, go back to ha and have a look at when you've got a little bit more time, because the, particularly the community initiatives, there's some really good uh, sort of roles in there, sort of for local things that are in your area. So obviously you can support the local area. So uh, there are still things available. You just need to think about any kind of gaps um, that you've got and maybe think about how you can uh, just do a little bit, obviously either from home, externally, or a little bit of both. And the main thing to sort of think about as well is, and this is something that I've been chatting to quite a lot of students about at the moment is, definitely don't underestimate what you've done recently over the last few months. So don't underestimate the support that you've given to your family, your friends, your neighbours. You've gained a huge amount of skills from uh, doing that. So obviously you've worked as part of a team, whether that's collaboratively with your neighbours to make sure that an elderly neighbour has got food and is uh, helped with sort of any anything that they need, any appointments or anything like that. You've obviously uh, helped your family in terms of the sort of the, making sure that the family network pulls together as well. You've obviously developed some great communication skills because we've all had to communicate differently. Working with a wide range of different people, as I say, you might have helped sort of people who you've not met before. Um, I know uh, sort of uh, in our surrounding neighbourhood, people have been working very closely together. You've probably pushed yourself out of your comfort zone a little bit as well. So again, we've all had to uh, take on new challenges in this different time. And I know certainly uh, the virtual sort of delivery style is very unique for, uh, for all of us. I'm sure all the presenters will agree today. It's a unique thing. So we're all had to change what we do as well. Resilient lots of resilience that we've had to all develop and just helping people with daily tasks and being aware of what's going on around you so definitely don't underestimate what what you've done as i said people have done a huge amount in the last uh, few months in the community sort of setting and with sort of family and friends and uh, the wider network of family and friends as well so just to summarize all the uh, different areas that we've spoken about because i know there's quite a lot to uh, to talk about in the different areas of uh, work experience but just to kind of uh, just to like sort of summarize what we've talked about obviously and i'm sure that uh, you've heard this from lots of universities but we absolutely uh, put a huge amount of value on attending as many open days as you can and um, even as i say if you're not thinking about that university open days are fantastic because you get a lot of background information to support with your personal statements interviews and what that subject's all about as well. Social media is superb, like we've said, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, whatever you prefer to use. We'll have a look at what's going on there. I've been reading some fantastic articles and journals that sort of academics have written. Find people who do the role, chat to them, use the internet resource. Have a little think about any gaps that you might think you've got in, uh, in what you're doing and then have a little think about that and how you can plug those gaps. 
look at what's going on just locally to you so look at what's going on in your local community find out what's happening see if there's anybody who needs some support and that might just be a, a neighbor that you can help with some uh, sort of daily tasks read up on your career so just be have a look at the university websites have a look at the modules start to think about portfolios if you're going into those particular areas speak to current students they're very keen to speak to you so have a chat on again on social media groups student rooms very good attend obviously the fact that you're attending things like this today is brilliant but there's some subject sort of specific ones as well so just make sure that you kind of use it with all the resources out there you're keeping a log of it and you've, you're up to date as i say with what's happening in your profession because we know as i say certain professions i mean physiotherapy is a good example where i know uh, physiotherapists are obviously now very active in the recovery of people who've had covid uh, sort of thing so that's really important again because their career is changing the world that we uh, have worked in has changed so just be aware of that and obviously keep up to date with that through uh, as i say sort of through all the various things so that's just a little summary of all the uh, various things that you can do so thank you for listening um i just uh, wanted to give you like as i say a little bit of an overview and to answer some of the questions that we've been asked an awful uh, an awful lot so yeah thank you for listening and obviously i will hand back to john thank you john thank you very much caroline a really really good session if you just click uh, stop share caroline it comes back to me that's brilliant thank you very much uh, great stuff i'm sure there's lots of people that are going to be helping their neighbors now prompted by your session uh, Caroline, so uh, thank you on your neighbour's behalf as well. Uh, right, uh, if I could introduce our final speaker, please, that's Louise Carr. Louise is joining us from York St. John University. And Louise is going to talk about employability and maximising employability in a virtual, well, in, in the current situation and also um, once we return to normality. Uh, Louise, the floor is yours. Over to you, please. Hello, everyone. Um, my name's Louise and I'm from York St. John University. Um, I'm here to talk today about employability and how to talk about your skills. So we've already had two really good sessions on interviews and how, on how to get that work experience. So I'm now going to talk about how we put all that together. So what are employability skills? So these are the transferable skills that make somebody employable. So this is what an um, employer looks for. It's what people in interviews look for. It's what we look for in applications to university. So these are the kind of skills that you can transfer between one thing to another. So a really good example is communication skills. You might have developed that um, by being part of a football club or being part of a drama club or whatever it might be. But then you can apply those skills to all different areas of your career, of your course, of your general life. And employers look for these skills because we believe that it will help you carry out that role in the best way possible. So you can think of these as portable skills or skills that you can pick up from one area of life and basically put down in another area of life. And you can gain these skills at any point in time, as has already been mentioned, just by doing things in your local community, by um, getting involved in school or college or university. There's all different ways that you can gain these skills. So here is just a few examples of the skills that employers tend to be looking for. If you Google transferable skills or um, the top questions that you get asked in interview, chances are a few of these will pop up. So can you give me an example of a time that you've solved a problem? Can you give me an example of a time that you've demonstrated your organisational skills? So those questions are being asked because they want to find out about the skills that you have. So just have a look at these, start thinking about which ones you might already have, which ones you might want to develop a little bit further. So, um, employability matters for everyone, obviously. If you're wanting to get a job straight out of school or college, then of course it's something that you need to be thinking about maybe a bit sooner. But equally for those who are interested in university, obviously the university market is very competitive and the graduate market is competitive as well. So it's about the things that you do alongside what you're expected to do. So at university, everyone is expected to do a degree. That's just the common sense side of it. And that's what you go to university for. But if you're on a course of 20, 30, 50, 100 people, and those 100 people all come out with the exact same degree, what do you have or what have you done that's made you stand out? That is what your employability is all about. 
and it's about showcasing your employability. So equally, students who are interested in applying for apprenticeships will need to showcase their skills a little bit earlier so that they don't have that kind of three years of university to build up those skills. They need to demonstrate that they're ready for the world of work right now. So there's lots of different ways that you can do that. So why might you go to university? Obviously for some um, qualify, so, sorry, for some professions, it is ne necessary. You can't go into that profession without it. So as much as I'm saying there are people who might want to go straight into the world of work, if you want to be a doctor, a dentist, a vet, you can't just walk into the workplace. You have to have a degree. Um, and part of that is obviously the subject knowledge, but the other side of that is the skills that you might develop through university as well. It may help you progress quicker than non-graduates and part of the reason is that some jobs will say that you need to have a degree, it doesn't matter what the degree is in, but again it's some of those skills that might be involved in your degree. It's personal achievement, it's internationally recognised, I know a few people were asking questions about um, studying abroad or going to different countries um, and it is a way to invest in your future as well. So as I've already mentioned there, what makes you stand out? If you've been to college or you've been to sixth form and you've done a qualification, absolutely brilliant. And we look for that in Newcastle um, applications. But what else have you done? What have you done outside of that? And that's what we look for in personal statements. So if you're applying to university through UCAS, um, you put down all of your subject information and you'll also do a personal statement. And it's in that personal statement that we find out a little bit more about you as a person. So you're in competition with other people, that's how our job market works. You will apply for the same job as multiple other people and you are competing to be the best person for that job. So what makes you different to every other person? Have you volunteered? Have you held a part-time job? Have you raised money for charity? What skills and hobbies do you have? Do you do something in your spare time? And these might not be big colossal things like Duke of Edinburgh or it might not be you know that you've worked part-time since you were two but it might just be things like Caroline said um, Caroline said about helping out in the community or having a hobby that involves a certain skill set so I know a lot of people at the moment are engaging a lot more online or they are um, taking part in online games tournaments and that might seem very normal to you but for somebody else that might be very impressive and it demonstrates a lot of skills so how to talk about your skills. This links back to the interview presentation as well. And it is something that people hate doing. Nobody likes talking about themselves. If I said to you, what are you really bad at? Chances are something's popped to your head like that. For me, it's maths, absolutely rubbish at maths. But if I said, what are you really, really good at? It does take you a little bit longer to come up with something because as human beings, we're almost conditioned to not talk about what we're good at. It's seen as bragging or it's seen as, you know, playing yourself up a little bit. But interviews and applications, that is what it is. It's there for you to sell yourself. There's lots of different ways to do it. And if you Google interview um, techniques or interview um, schedules or strategies, loads of things come up. There's the star technique, there's all sorts. But the easiest one for me to remember is ABC because we've known it since we were children. So A stands for activity. Tell us what you did and be precise. B stands for benefit. So what skills or knowledge or experience did you get out of that? Don't just leave it at, oh, I just played football. What did you get out of it? And then C stands for how did this activity or benefit relate to the course or career that you're interested in? So this ABC can be applied to um, university. You just, the C stands for course. Or if you're interested in applying for jobs, you just change the C to the career. So you just change it depending on what you're actually interested in at that moment in time. So ABC. For A, don't just say that you've had work experience in a school, for example. That doesn't tell me what your responsibilities were. It doesn't tell me what you actually did. And I always think it's really important to say that people can have the same opportunities some people make more of those opportunities. So um, person A and person B could have gone and had work experience in a school. One person could have sat at the back of the classroom and just watched. The other person would have got involved and they would have asked for more responsibilities and they would have taken on extra duties. So you've got to talk a little bit about that experience to make it valuable. Um, for B, don't just list skills. Don't just say communication, teamwork, networking, all those types of things. Um, give examples of a time that you've used it and that it's been a benefit to you. 
And then for C, don't just name drop the course and career, demonstrate that you've done your research. As was mentioned earlier in another presentation, if you can demonstrate that you know a bit about the course or career you're interested in, that really um, impresses the person who's reading your application or who is doing the interview. So I've done a really, really quick example. So during college, I worked part-time at a local sports club. So that's A, but that's not enough from A. So then you'd go on and say, I was responsible for the management of kit and resources. I was also in charge of social media and created adverts to, and posts to encourage sign up. So you've told me your responsibilities in your roles. So B, this allowed me to develop my graphic design skills and my awareness of social media influence. It also helped me organize, um, with my organizational skills, doing my kit check routine, etc. So they've not just said I've developed my graphic design skills and organizational skills. They've given me two examples of a time that they've done that. And I understand this experience and skills will be useful for my, for my degree in sports management. Okay, you've named up the career. My graphic design skills will benefit me during my portfolio module. And I'm enthusiastic about continuing to be involved in clubs dur during my degree and throughout my placement year. So they've demonstrated to me that they know there's a portfolio module. So they've done the research. They also know that there's a possibility of a placement year. So again, they've demonstrated that they've gone above and beyond. They've not just name dropped something. They've put in a lot of detail there. So that is how ABC works. So hopefully that's useful. Take this away with your user or come up with another strategy that suits you. But it just means that if you followed those steps, chances are you've included every part. So examples of professions with certain skills, I won't read all of these out, but you might start to think about a career or a job that you want to go into and what skills are beneficial for that career. So obviously to be a primary school teacher, you'll need some patience. You're working with young people. To be a police officer, you'll need to be responsible and act in a professional manner. So start thinking about what kind of skills you might need to develop for your future career. And then gaining skills at university. So chances are you've already done some of these. Playing sports, joining a society, volunteering, um, getting involved with the student union, studying abroad, as, been, as it's been mentioned earlier, part-time work or work experience. You've already built up skills, as I've already mentioned about um, online gaming. That might seem to you as something that is just run of the mill every day. There's no skills involved in it, but it shows that you've got um, networking skills, communication skills, if you're playing a team sport. It shows that you've got some understanding of IT. Um, you know, so there is a lot of ways that you can talk about the things that you do day to day, but link skills to that as well. So start to have a think about what you do every day, what you do when you're out of school or college, um, and think about what skills are involved in that, because every single person does have skills. And then if you are interested in going to university or if you're kind of on the fence about it, university can just give you the opportunity to develop those skills a little bit further. So becoming more independent or increasing your subject knowledge or your research skills or challenging yourself. So that's outside of the actual degree, people might choose to go to university because they want to develop those employability skills even further. So as I've already said, just take a moment to think about what you've already done so far. As Caroline said, Take some time to think about what you've done during this lockdown. Have you been involved in organizing quiz nights for families or friends? Have you been helping out in your community? Those all have skills involved and it is really, really valuable. It doesn't have to be something with a certificate or a qualification for it to be of value to a university or to an employer. Um, people have been mentioned what, what work experience can I have? Um, you know, you can do things on social media, you can create an online portfolio. Sometimes it doesn't have to be a black and white, you know, printed out version of something. We can be more technologically advanced nowadays. So think about all of those things that you might have already done or think about things that you might want to do in the future. And then you can just start ticking off all of those skills. And sometimes it's just literally a buzzword that you can mention in an interview and say, you know, I've, I've got this skill, which was mentioned in the applicant form um, and this is how I've developed it and this is the benefit that I've got from it. 